Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest version of CleanFlight version 1.13 that as of the recording, which is the 19th of May, is in release candidate. But assuming everything goes okay with that, it'll become the next official release of CleanFlight. There are some new things starting to appear in here and I did a podcast last week where I went through some of these and we discussed them and it was quite interesting. Now, lots of subscribers have asked us to do these style of videos to explain what these changes mean. And uh, this is the first one we're doing here just to test and see how it works. If this is something that's interesting and valuable to you then please let us know because if it is it's something we'll try and do more often. To look at the latest clean flight releases it's very straightforward just google clean flight release and you'll probably find this at the top which is the github repository. This is the place where you can download all of the software. Now the pre-release stuff here is at the top this is the one we're going to talk about so it's version 1.13 of clean flight released about a week ago. RC means it's a release candidate it isn't out yet. The way it works there's a little commentary usually at the top also some important stuff that you need to know and then this is the bit we're going to talk about the changes from the pre previous version. It's also really useful to look at the previous versions as well. If we go down here, for example, occasionally it will document the known issues. So if you're about to upgrade to clean flight, don't just do it without having a look at these files because looking in here will help you avoid some of the gotchas. The stuff we're going to talk about though is 1.13. Now, as always, there's always a massive amount of code cleanups. That's something that is <laughs> written pretty much every time a release comes out. So optimization of the code, making it run cleaner and better, um, which is great. The first key thing in here is that 1.13 is the first version that changes how upgrades happen. So from 1.13 on, it will not blow away your configuration if you do an upgrade. The way it currently works is that every time you do a clean flight upgrade, and for those of you that have done it, you'll feel this pain, you either have to back up your configuration and then restore it once the upgrade's complete, or you have to just remember how the settings were, and once the configuration is complete and done and the upgrade's finished, then you just go back in and you kind of select the receiver type you have and all the other bits and bobs to get it working again. From version 1.13, a lot of that will be done automatically. So this won't work if you're on 1.12 and go to 1.13. Unfortunately, you'll still have to go through that process, but the configuration information is gonna be stored in a way that if you're in version 1.13, and then when version 1.14 comes out, a lot of that configuration data will come across automatically. You're not gonna to have to change anything. That is a huge bonus, and I can't wait for that to happen because when we're playing with boards here, reproducing problems and doing how-to videos, uh, we're constantly having to do upgrades because some of the boards that we're using have been plugged in for two or three months, and we spend all of our time then trying to remember how they were set up. Big features down here. There is BL Heli ESC configuration via the USB added. This is something that Boris added very early on to Beta Flight that everyone absolutely loves. And here it is in Clean Flight. So that's great to see in here for the Clean Flight pilots. That's going to really help. What that means is that rather than you have to plug in the ESCs running BL Heli individually, you can connect to them through the flight controller and do your settings and change how they're running without having to unplug anything. It can all be done through the USB cable that you've already got plugged in to configure clean flight. Next one is a bit of an interesting one. Mavlink telemetry has been added. Now we've had a loads of different types of telemetry on clean fly for ages and we've been playing with them on the channel. The main ones that we've played with here is MSP or multi we serial protocol. MSP is the one that we tend to use when we're talking via the USB cable and we also use it for things like the on-screen display as well. So if you're interested in that, you can go and watch us use that stuff in things like the NASI 32 series or the SP3 or the SP3 mini series that we've done as well. Mavlink is a different one from the others that are running. Mavlink is one that you would tend to find on things like APMs, PixHawks and CC3Ds and it's a very different style of telemetry. So just looking at this you'd be thinking why the heck has Mavlink been added because we already have MSP, we have all the FR Sky telemetries, why do we need another one? Well if you look at some of the stuff that's coming up soon, um, a lot of the HD FPV equipment has on-screen displays that understands Mavlink. So having this here is going to be really interesting for when we get our hands on some of the HD FPV technology because it will allow us to run their on-screen displays natively out a flight controller that's running clean flight. 
So there's the complete overhaul of the configuration storage mechanism that we talked about at the top. It just means that from here on in, we should be able to upgrade without losing all of our settings. With little changes like the SP Racing F3 Mini, that didn't allow for PWM inputs, so you're only allowed to connect it to your receiver using PPM or SBUS. Uh, using spare pins, you can now use a PWM receiver if that's the way you want to do it. Some changes to the LED pieces, so there's now also uh, strip features for something called beacon and GPS status. Now this is really interesting. Now the changes that's been going on in iNav, which is the test fork of CleanFlight that's doing all of the GPS code, that hasn't made it back into CleanFlight yet. It's one that I'm personally really waiting for because I loved the features in the original Multiway, which is what BaseFlight and CleanFlight came out of. Uh, but the fact we have GPS status in here is great. Uh, hopefully that iNav stuff will make it back in the next release or two. We'll be able to get the GPS hold and GPS return to home features back in CleanFlight and also we'll be able to check the GPS status using the LEDs at the back too, which is awesome. There has been quite a few new bits of hardware added, so things like the Vortex Pro, stuff from Alien Flight, the SP Rating Team, Black Sheep, stuff has been added too, so that's quite nice. And there's been some performance updates, things like there's a new task scheduler as well, which again should just make it run better. But for my money, the big headlines here, first of all, is that now from 1.13 we should be able to upgrade without having to blow the configuration away. We are now able to change the BL Heli configuration for ESCs connected to flight controllers running clean flight, which is massive. We've been waiting for that one for a while. Mavlink telemetry is in here, which is going to be great for FPV HD. And if you're running one of the newer boards, then this should support it. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in this stuff and kind of gives you a little bit more information behind what these changes are all about. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and happy flying.